We're talking now with Peter from the University of Queensland. Uh, Peter's been developing uh, a new kind of biofuel, and biofuel is something that in aviation we haven't been uh, really focusing on, but it's becoming more to the fore as we approach peak oil. So Peter, can you tell us a little bit about the, uh, the new technology? Well, the new technology is based on the plant oil, and we all know that plants produce oil. Uh, soybean and peanut are part of our normal diet. Uh, the problem with soybean and peanut is that they are food, and food oil should be used for people to eat. So it is unethical to actually utilize a food crop or food land and food water in order to make a biofuel for cars or airplanes. So what we have discovered is a tree which actually produces seeds. So you harvest the seeds the same way that you would harvest macadamia nuts or olives. And these seeds contain 40% oil. So this oil can be squashed out and then converted to a biofuel which can be used in airplanes. Fantastic. And uh, when was the, uh, the seed discovered? Well, the, the tree obviously existed for millions and billions of years, not probably billions, but for a very, very long time. And it was actually the people of India who have first discovered it probably thousands of years ago, where they extracted the oil out of the seed and then utilized it as a heating oil or lantern oil. Uh, the oil is non-edible, it, it's not toxic, but uh, it, it doesn't taste good. So the Indians have utilized it along and then slowly, about five, ten years ago, people in Australia, as energy costs were rising, looked for oil crops and the pongamia tree became very, very obvious. Fantastic. Now, uh, implementation of the seed into, into bio oils, what is that kind of a timeline we're looking at? Well, the, the, the tree is a tree, but it's a fast-growing tree, so it's, it's slower than, let's say, a soybean plant or a canola plant, but it is faster than an oak tree or eucalypt tree. So we are growing right now a lot of plantations around southeast Queensland and central Queensland, for example, close to Roma in central Queensland, where the trees are three meters tall and have a stem diameter of about this much after three years. And they're starting to carry seeds. So the implementation really means that we can harvest now pongamia seeds and make pongamia oil at, at, at an experimental level, not at a commercial level, not enough to fly an airplane. But if we had proper investment, and this is one of the problems working at the university, we are academically focused. If we had proper commercial investment, get enough land, get enough planting, get small factories out, uh, there could be a functional Pongamia biofuel industry in five to six years. That's fantastic. Now, uh, the costs involved in uh, implementing the biofuel, can you give us an idea uh, compared to relative prices of today? The, 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 the price structure at a full scale will always be smaller than what you do at a small scale, right? So the, the large scale uh, will have costs, cost advantages. Now, right now, uh, the, ma the major cost is actually the land and the planting of the tree, right? But the advantage of that is that you do this only once every 35 years. Right, and the land presumably yeah, forever. So as compared to an annual crop where you have every year planting costs and every year you're planting risks because it may be a dry year or a wet year. So with a tree you only have that risk once every 35 years. Now the subsequent costs are, are, are marginal as a tree is growing up. You then have harvesting costs and processing costs. So at, at, at present we are looking uh, at a predicted price for Pongamia oil at around 400 to 600 dollars a ton, which is actually very, very competitive relative to crude oil, uh, even at today's prices, and even more competitive relative to palm oil or, um, yeah, or, or, or jatropha oil, yeah, or algal oil. Yeah. Now, simple question: uh, How is the oil extracted from the seed? Oh, there, there are two processes of extraction. One of them is called cold pressing which is a mechanical process, as, 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 as you hear it. It's the same what is being done with, with olive oil. Uh, you ultimately have a huge, huge press which produces tons of pressure per square centimeter and you, you squish the seed, right? And out, out comes the oil. Now the, the oil release is helped by a little bit of heating of the, of the powder which you make out of the, out of the seed. So it's a bit of an oxymoron calling it cold pressing when you actually have to make it warm. But it's still cold relative to hot. The, the second process is solvent extraction. And solvent sounds negative, I mean, you, you, you get uh, scared when you hear it, but it's, it's, it's basically methanol. 
and methanol is very easily made out of uh, coal seam gas, out of methane, for example. And the advantage of the methanol extraction is that you extract the oil with the methanol and then you evaporate the methanol out of the oil. So you get it actually back again. Now, a little bit gets stuck here or there, but uh, the input costs are relatively minimal and methanol is not an environmental toxin, as, as, as you know, not in, in, in moderate amounts. So there, there, there are two methodologies which exist and they, they, they both have advantages. And it just simply depends on what it will be at the end. I mean, when we actually have an industry which is running these processes. That's fantastic, Peter. Well, thank you very much for your time. I think biofuels are something that we should all be conscious of, and I think you're doing great things here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.